Welcome to Zion National Park. Look at that view. Zion National Park is an incredible place. In this video, we're gonna go over my top 10 things to do in Zion National Park. Not in any specific order. All of these things are great, and some of them are gonna be better for you depending on your preferences and your physical abilities. So Zion National Park is located in southwestern Utah. It was actually Utah's first national park of the five national parks in Utah. The park can be broken down into three basic sections. We have the western section, we have the eastern section of the park, and we have Zion Canyon, which is the section of the park that most people visit when they come to Zion. During my trip to Zion, I spent two weeks there and I visited the canyon and the eastern section of the park. So this video is gonna have stuff for you to do from those sections of the park. We visited Zion National Park in March of 2021 and the Park Service implemented a reservation system for the shuttle going into Zion Canyon. The shuttle is only used for going into the canyon. If you want to go to the east or west side of the park, you're going to need your own vehicle. During the winter months, the shuttle does not operate and you can drive into the canyon, but from March until about October, the shuttle is running and the only way you can get into the canyon during those months is by taking the shuttle, taking a commercial shuttle that is available right here, or by riding your bicycle into the canyon. You need to book your shuttle pass on recreation.gov several weeks before you come to visit. Uh, that's when the first batch go out and then the second batch of tickets goes out the night before you plan on entering the canyon. So I will leave a link to that shuttle reservation system under this video so you can plan that out accordingly. Once you book your shuttle ticket and you're ready to go into Zion Canyon, you need to park near the visitor center. That's where the shuttle buses all leave from but the visitor center parking lot will fill up completely by 9 or 10 a.m. during the busy months. So you may need to park in the town of Springdale and then walk over the bridge through the pedestrian entrance over to the visitor center area. All right, now that I've covered the basics of how you get around in Zion National Park, let's get into our top 10 things to do in the National Park. Number 10 is the Canyon Overlook Trail. This trail is located more on the eastern side of the park. You need a vehicle to get to this trailhead and you take the scenic drive right through the Zion Mount Carmel tunnel. And as soon as you exit that tunnel, there will be a parking lot to your right that only holds about eight cars. You can park there or you could keep driving a little bit more and you'll start to see more parking along the left side of the road. You can park there to access the trailhead as well. This trail is one mile out and back so it's a half mile out to the viewpoint and a half mile back to the trailhead it has an elevation gain of 442 feet as you can see the trail is rocky there's a little bit of some slick rock it might be a little slippery so just be careful on this trail especially with smaller kids i would rank this trail as moderate because of that elevation gain but it's not too long of a hike so it's a pretty pleasant one with some great rewarding views at the viewpoint. We were lucky enough to have a dusting of snow just before we started the hike, so some of the plants just look beautiful when we got to see this hike. But when you come to visit this hike, the trail might look very different. During the summer months, Zion gets really hot, so make sure you also carry lots of water with you as well. When you make it to the viewpoint, you have a beautiful overlook of Pine Creek Canyon with steep walls on the left and right sides. And this canyon opens up and meets up with Zion Canyon, the main canyon in this national park. And there are some plaques here that can tell you the different peaks that you can see from this viewpoint. It's a really nice little hike. And then you just turn around and go back the way you came. Number nine is Pine Creek Canyon, which is located just across the street from 
the Canyon Overlook Trail. Pine Creek runs along the eastern side of the park and meanders down into Zion Canyon. Some sections of Pine Creek are only accessible via canyoneering and it's not safe for regular hikers. So this is the little section of Pine Creek that we decided to hike. This trail is not marked, <laughs> so there isn't a big trailhead sign that talks about the name of the trail or any background on the trail or gives you a trail map or anything like that. So I will leave a link for the coordinates of this trailhead in the description so that you can find it. But basically the parking lot out of the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel on the right side, if you're heading east, that parking lot right there, there are some restrooms and you'll see a little sign that says river access. And that will take you down into that little canyon there, that's Pine Creek Canyon. And from there you wanna make a left and start heading up the canyon. And we didn't go too far here because it starts to get bouldery and the rocks get larger and it's a little harder to meander through the canyon. But this was a pretty incredible slot canyon. I was really impressed. It's beautiful. It's not too strenuous of a hike other than just getting down to the trailhead. It's a little bit steep and slippery on the rocks, just getting to the canyon itself from the parking lot. But once you're in this canyon, it's relatively flat. You just have a little bit of scrambling over some larger rocks. And then whenever you get uncomfortable, you can just turn around. Keep in mind that this is a slot canyon. It does get flash flooding. You don't want to visit this trail when flash flooding conditions are possible. We hiked this trail in March. You can see it's snowing a little bit and conditions were relatively dry the several days before we did this hike. So check on weather conditions before doing any slot canyon hikes in Zion. Number eight on our list is Zion Lodge and the Emerald Pools Trail. This area is inside Zion Canyon and you need to take the shuttle to stop number five. Zion Lodge is a beautiful little spot in Zion Canyon. It has a nice open grassy area where you could sit and have a picnic, read a book, relax in the sun. You also could stay at the lodge. We did not stay at the lodge. I have a feeling it's tough to get in and you have to book really far in advance. But even if you aren't staying at the lodge overnight, you're welcome to come and visit the lodge. There's a restaurant that had takeout only when we were there due to COVID. There's a gift shop that has lots of really cool stuff. And there's a big bathroom area if you need to use the facilities before you do any hiking or outdoor activities. And from the lodge, you just cross the street and that's where the trailhead to the Emerald Pools begins, where you cross over the Virgin River and then you start to make a little loop. The lower Emerald Pools trail is the one that most people do. It's the least strenuous If you want to go further, you can continue on to Middle Emerald Pool, which basically takes you up an elevation over to a rocky section that feeds into the Lower Emerald Pool. So that Middle Pool feeds into Lower Pool. And then if you want to go even farther and make your hike a little more strenuous, you can go all the way up to the Upper Emerald Pool, which feeds down to Middle Pool, which feeds down to Lower Pool, and then feeds into the Virgin River. If you're physically capable, I definitely recommend going all the way up to Upper Emerald Pool because that area is the least crowded. It's right at the base of these really steep, tall canyon walls. We did this hike in the late afternoon, so the pool was a little murkier and it was all in shadow, so it wasn't quite as exciting when we saw it, but I definitely recommend coming to do this hike around 11 a.m. Emerald Pool hike seem to be a very popular trail with families. We noticed lots of kids and their parents on this hike. Just keep an eye on your kids so that they stay kind of farther back from the cliff edges and the middle Emerald Pool area. Also, I wanted to note that Emerald Pool is not a swimming pool. There is no swimming allowed in this area.
Next on our list is the Watchman Trail. This trail is moderate to strenuous. It's 3.1 miles round trip. It's an out and back type of trail and you have over 600 feet of elevation gain on this hike. It offers awesome views of the Watchman, which is a big rock peak there, and also has some great views of Zion Canyon. You can see the visitor center in the shuttle area. You do not need a shuttle pass to do this hike because the trailhead is directly across the street from the visitor center. You'll see a big sign that says the Watchman Trail. You'll follow that trail along the right side of the Virgin River if you're looking up canyon, and then the trail will start to lead off to the right. You'll cross over a service road and then you'll start going up in elevation, kind of going up and around a ledge until you come to this nice overlook. There are a couple steep drops from the side of this trail, so just be careful if you're taking kids with you on this hike. This is a great trail for nature, getting a good workout, and having some nice views. Next on our list, we have the Visitor Center and the Parus Trail. I grouped these two things together because they're close to each other and they're both more of a laid back, go at your own pace, just learn about the park and take in some of Zion National Park without overexerting yourself and without needing a shuttle pass. You do need to pay the fee to enter Zion National Park to get to the Visitor Center. You can park in the Visitor Center parking lot or park in the town of Springdale and then walk through the pedestrian entrance. And then the Visitor Center is right on your left after you enter the pedestrian entrance. You can shop around for souvenirs in the Visitor Center. The Visitor Center also has many informational posters talking about the different geological processes in the park, what formed the canyon, the water process in the park, the nature and animals and tree and plant species in the park. So it's a really educational spot. After browsing around the Visitor Center, I recommend taking the Pyrus Trail for a little walk into Zion Canyon. To access this trailhead, you are going to go where the shuttles take off, walk to the main road, take a left, you're going to go over a bridge that goes over the Virgin River, and right after you cross that bridge, you're going to make a right, go across the street, and you'll see a big sign that says Pyrus Trail. This trail is a paved path that basically follows the Virgin River all the way to the point where the road splits to go up into the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel, or you could go straight into the canyon. That's the point where this trail ends. If you decide to follow this trail all the way from the visitor center to that intersection with the Zion Mount Carmel Road, and then come back, that's 3.4 miles round trip. This trail is paved so you can take a stroller on here you can take your pets on this trail and bicycles are also allowed to use this trail we actually use this trail every time we wanted to bike into the canyon we would take the pyrus trail go under the bridge and then continue riding our bicycles in farther into the canyon the pyrus trail is relatively flat i'd say it has a slight incline going up into the canyon more but you don't notice it too much the trail also has some little informational posters talking about the park. You have awesome views looking up at the canyon walls from both sides. And this is a relatively popular trail for many different purposes, so you're never going to be alone on this trail. Number 5 on our list is the Zion Mount Carmel Highway Scenic Drive. From the visitor center, you'll follow the road towards Zion Canyon, and then you'll come to an intersection where you could go left to go further into the canyon, but you can't go that way during the shuttle running time. You can only go straight with your private vehicle when the shuttles are running, and that is the way you want to go for this drive. You're going to start winding back and forth, going up the canyon until you get to the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel. This tunnel is like pitch black in there. The only light that comes in is from these windows that they carved out of the side of the tunnel that let natural light in and you can actually like see into the canyon. This tunnel is open 24-7 for regular traffic but for oversized vehicles they need to shut down 
the traffic in both directions for you to make it through the tunnel, so you need to register that with the park, and it's only open between 8 a.m. and 5 or 6 p.m. for oversized vehicles. But once you get through the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel, you'll make it to the eastern section of the park where the drive just continues being amazing. The eastern side is a little bit less like a canyon and more of just like this beautiful red rock mountainous terrain. You can see wildlife from the road. It's definitely a windy drive, so take your time and be careful, but it's a wonderful drive. I'm a sucker for a scenic drive and this one does not disappoint. It's especially amazing after it snows but you have gorgeous views all the time. Just such a colorful drive with the red rock, the green plants, the blue sky. If you're doing any hikes on the eastern side of the park, then you will be able to drive this road to get to your hike. Number four on our list is the Narrows. This is a hike that literally takes you into the Virgin River where the canyon gets very narrow and you have steep walls on both sides of you. I have a video prepping for this hike and giving a more thorough explanation of how to do this hike. I will link that in the description below this video if you want to check that out. But briefly going over this hike, you take the shuttle to stop number nine, that's the Temple of Sinawava. From there, you'll get off of the shuttle, you'll make a left and follow the river sidewalk, which is a paved, dry portion of this hike. The river sidewalk is a great walk for families with young children that just want to get near the water. You could have a picnic uh, along the river sidewalk. You're right along the Virgin River there. And then eventually the river sidewalk ends and you have to go down some steps and into the Virgin River to continue hiking up the Virgin River into the narrower canyon. Depending on what time of year you do this hike, you may want to rent some dry gear from Zion Outfitter. This rental company is located just outside the pedestrian entrance to Zion National Park in Springdale. We rented gear because we did this hike in early March when the air temperature was in the 40s Fahrenheit and the water temperature was very cold as well. When we did this hike, the highest that the water level came up to us was about our hips, um, but at some points of the year, the water level could be even higher. This can be a dangerous hike because flash floods are possible. You need to check weather conditions before you do this hike. This hike can take anywhere from one hour up to a full day, depending on how far into the canyon and up the Virgin River you choose to go. After a few miles, you'll come to a split in the Narrows where you can go to the right to go up Orderville Canyon, or you could continue left-ish to continue up the Virgin River Canyon. And that's where you get to the famous Wall Street section of the hike. It's a pretty epic hike, so if you have the opportunity and if you're physically capable of doing this, I definitely recommend it. Next, we have the Angel's Landing Hike via the West Rim Trail. This hike is on a lot of people's bucket lists, and for good reason. It's a pretty rewarding hike. You get some amazing views of the canyon from all different angles. It's a strenuous hike, and it's a very scary hike, so you feel very accomplished after you do this one, but it does get very crowded. This trail is 5.4 miles round trip. It has over 1,500 feet of elevation gain. To access this trail, you're going to take the shuttle to stop number six, the grotto. You're going to get off there. There are restrooms at that stop. After you get off the shuttle, you're going to cross the street, take a bridge over the Virgin River, and start hiking in the canyon. You'll start to incline, do some switchbacks, going up the side of that canyon wall a little bit, and then you'll make your way into this cool little canyon called Refrigerator Canyon, where everything is in shade for most of the day. Then you'll start doing a couple more switchbacks. You'll come to this viewpoint where you have 21 switchbacks. Lots of switchbacks and lots of incline there. And then you'll come out to this main open area where you can go onward towards Angel's Landing or you could go towards the left a little bit and continue along the West Rim Trail. If you're afraid of heights, 
I recommend stopping at this point and turning around. You don't want to do Angel's Landing if you have a fear of heights or if you don't want people touching you or, you know, being right up in your space because the trail gets very narrow. For the last half mile, you're on a ledge. There are cables that you have to hold on to, chains and cables, and people are going to be trying to get around you because you're going out and you have to go the same way to come back. Uh, so just take your time with it. I have a video about the Angels Landing hike in more detail. If you guys want to find out more about this hike, you can click the link below this description that will take you to the Angels Landing hike prep video. Number two is the Many Pools Trail, located on the eastern side of the park. You need a vehicle to access this trailhead. This is an unmarked trail, so I have the coordinates here for you to access this trail. Just put those coordinates in before you leave Zion Canyon because you may not have cell service out here. This is an out and back type trail. It's 2.3 miles round trip, but you can turn around at any point that you'd like. It has about 550 feet elevation gain and basically this trail takes you along a drainage basin where pools will collect water and then whenever there's a lot of precipitation it kind of flows down and feeds into Pine Creek. We really enjoyed this trail because it wasn't very crowded. We only saw a couple other people on it and you get some pretty awesome views of the eastern section of the park. It's also nice to see those little pools of water. They are very still, so they reflect the light and the color of whatever's behind it. And we were also lucky enough to do this hike on a day where we had a little bit of snow. So it was a really beautiful little trail. This trail is okay for kids. There aren't any steep drop-offs or anything like that. It's just a little strenuous going uphill. We had a tough time finding the actual starting point for this trail, so here's a quick little explanation. You can just walk up along the road, right about to where the dotted line is gonna stop, and just cut down to the right here. And then you'll follow that trail around. It'll cut back left and right and left and it'll eventually bring you to the tunnel. And finally, number one on our list is the hike to Observation Point via the East Mesa Trail. I know I said this list wasn't in any special order, but number one is actually my favorite thing in Zion National Park. And that's because this trail offers incredible views, it's a moderate hike, and it's not crowded. The reason it's not crowded is because it's difficult to access this trailhead. You have to leave the east entrance of the park, head east out of the park, go north, and then follow this private road on the Zion Ponderosa Ranch, and then park just outside the eastern section of the park, and then walk back into the national park for this hike. But you may need four-wheel drive to access the parking area because it's just a dirt road. It could get very muddy and we were happy that we had four-wheel drive. I have a video talking about this hike in more detail. I will leave a link for that below in the description as well. Basically, this hike starts out at a higher elevation where you're hiking through a forest with pinyon pine, ponderosa pine, you can smell the pine as you're hiking, it's really nice. And you kind of get into more of a clearing area. You'll see some canyons on your right and then you'll see a canyon on your left as you're hiking down. And eventually you'll come to this intersection where you go right to head to observation point or you could go left to continue along the east rim trail. We went right to observation point and you get some stunning views of Zion Canyon. It's incredible. You're at a higher elevation than Angel's Landing. You can actually see the tiny little hikers on Angel's Landing from this point. And we were lucky enough to see a few California condors flying overhead. This was just like the full package. You have a good workout. You have some amazing views. 
you get to see some wildlife, you can smell the nature, and you're not interrupted by lots of people. <laughs> Great hike, my favorite. So that was my top 10 list, but here are a few more bonus things you can do in Zion that we enjoyed. You can bike ride into Zion Canyon. They actually have e-bikes in Springdale. You can rent those, make it a little easier on your legs if you want to bike ride into Zion Canyon, because that is quite the workout if you go all the way into the canyon. You can walk and shop around in the town of Springdale. There are a couple little art galleries, some rock shops, a bunch of great little restaurants. It's a nice small town. There's lodging in Springdale if you want to stay at a hotel. And that brings me to my next thing. You could stay at the campground in Zion National Park. There's the Watchman Campground where we stayed. In addition to the Watchman Campground, there's the South Campground. We think the Watchman Campground is a little nicer because the sites are larger. You can fit your trailer in the Watchman Campground and it's right along the river and out of the path of visitors to the park. And of course, there is a whole western section of Zion National Park that you can drive to and check out those hikes as well. So that was my top 10 list of things to do in Zion National Park, but there's a lot more to do in the park depending on your preferences. You might like some other hikes in the park. You might just want to go relax and have a picnic somewhere. You might want to do more of a strenuous hike with some backpacking in the park. There's a lot to do. So we'll leave a link to the Zion National Park website for you below this video so that you can explore on your own if there's more you want to look into. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button under this video so you don't miss any more of our top 10 lists in national parks or other fun travel adventures. Have a great day and happy travels.